Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm Dr. Cummings from PLNU and we're in the middle of a multi-part series on how to approach reading the scientific literature. Uh, particularly if you've never done it before, it can be really, really daunting. So uh, this series of videos is intended to help kind of walk you through the basics of what you're going to find in a paper and what you can do with each of the sections. And in this particular episode, I want to talk about the sections towards the beginning and the end of the paper that kind of uh, book end it, the introduction, and then what's sometimes called either a discussion or a conclusions section. Uh, in most cases, it's one or the other. Sometimes there's a discussion and conclusions, and they kind of start uh, parsing them finely. But for the most part, you've got an intro and you've got a discussion or conclusions like section at the end. Let me remind you what we talked about in the earlier videos, <clears throat> where you want to start with uh, kind of looking at the entire paper. You want to look over the whole thing, sort of like you're getting ready to go on a road trip and you pull out a map. You, you probably shouldn't just look at exactly the road you're on and nothing else. You should probably get the lay of the land first and then zoom in on the road exactly that you're on. So if you go through the anatomy of the paper, look at how your particular paper is organized, what sections you can expect to find, how long is it, are you sitting down for the next five hours, you can be able to knock this thing out in five minutes, etc. Then move to the title and see if the, the key words are there that you are looking for, for whatever your purpose is for reading this paper. And if so, then you go to the abstract where you're going to get the core methods and the core results, like an advertisement for the rest of the paper. If the ad hooks you and you say, yeah, this is what I'm after, the next thing to do is probably to go into the introduction. Now, the introduction really mimics um, the beginning of the process of science. If you think about the scientific method, we don't just immediately make up a hypothesis out of thin air. We have, uh, we have a context to it, right? There's, there's other research out there on a subject of interest to us, and we want to build on that. So the introduction is there to set the stage. It's to set the context for this particular study that you're about to read about. And so you're going to get a lot of background that helps you to see, well, what was already known that led us to a gap or a contradiction or a conflict or um, just some area where we're at a boundary and we don't know what's beyond that boundary. How did we get to that boundary? So as you read the introduction, keep in mind that you're being set up from very broad to very narrow. And the very narrow typically comes at the end of the introduction here. So you can see in this paper, it starts with the aim of this study was to. The last paragraph of the introduction is generally the place where an author is going to say, okay, now you know the big picture and you understand the context. Here's the piece we're trying to work on, right? Here's the boundary we've pushed up against with our knowledge. And here's the baby step we're going to try to take to push that boundary and head into a new frontier. So in this one it says, the aim of this study was to capture and characterize resistance plasmids from an urban wetland receiving mixed runoff that intermittently includes untreated human wastewater. Okay, having read all that introduction, I know now why this is important. It's novel, it's new, it's a gap in our understanding. And then sometimes you'll get a little teaser, like they did in this paper. We describe the complete nucleotide sequences of four novel plasmids from this environment and the antibiotics to which they confer resistance. Again, really honing in on from the very broad to the very, very specific. And that's what happens in an introduction. Now let's jump down to the end to the conclusions. Sometimes you, you may want to actually do this in your reading. Other times you may want to go ahead and read, skim the materials and methods, read the results, and then see the conclusions. But sometimes you want to jump straight to the discussion section. So let's go ahead and do that because it's in many ways a reflective, like reverse reflective like a mirror, of the introduction. So we scroll our way down here, still scrolling, we get to a discussion section. The discussion section is where the authors are going to try to interpret their results. They're going to try to find meaning in what they saw, right? Back in the results section, they showed you a graph and in words they described what was happening, but they didn't try to find the meaning in what was happening. The, the purpose of the discussion is to try to find meaning in the results that they got. So they're going to describe meaning. They're also going to try to then take your the specific results that they got and put them in a broader context. 
you remember the introduction started with a broad context and said, here's the specific experiment that we want to, uh, we want to carry out in order to add to this broader context. Now in the discussion, they're going to say, here's the results from our ex specific experiment. We want to talk about where they fit in to the broader context again. So you'll see some re repetition with the introduction, but a good discussion is going to bring in new things because the introduction heading into these experiments, they didn't know exactly what they were going to get. Now they know what they got and they can start comparing to other studies. So they want to talk about connections with other work. And then typically also in the discussion, usually towards the end of the discussion, you'll start to hear the, the authors describing what they think the importance or the implications of these results are. This is where a scientific article can start to get a little speculative, and that's actually okay as long as you, the reader, recognize we're starting to speculate now. We're forming new hypotheses. We're speculating as to how our data fit into a bigger theory or a bigger model. But it, it, it may have some speculation. A little bit's okay. Too much speculation. If the author's taking too much license or making statements as if they were facts, you've got to call them out on that, at least mentally in your mind if you're not reviewing the paper for them. Uh, you've got to call them out on that. And so the discussion uh, has really three these three purposes, interpreting the results, pitching the results in light of, in the context of other relevant research, and then considering, well, what's the importance or relevance of this work? And we're going to speculate a little bit, maybe even think about next steps, next experiments, future work. That's what happens with our bookended introduction and discussion in a journal article.